Greetings, one and all! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Yes, I'm back! Back with more movies, more games, more anime, and maybe, just maybe, a very special surprise or two. None of which is actually getting us towards today's topic. Let's find out what it is. Akira? Well, it's certainly not a bad film, but the dub is widely regarded as not very good. Permit me to elaborate. Originally released in 1988, Akira is the quintessential anime movie. Nominally concerned with the power struggle within a biker gang, this movie touches on the themes of politics, telepathy and telekinesis, nuclear anxiety, and much, much more. Now before we get to the movie itself, I should mention that the dub that I mentioned was produced by the original distributor Streamline Pictures in 1987. Today we'll be reviewing a new dub, created in 2001 by dub studio Animes. With that said, suit up, bike up, and rev your engines, cause we're talking about a revolution in more ways than one with the legendary Akira! It's 2019 in Neo Tokyo, and the Cassials, a rowdy biker gang, are up to no good. I believe that Akira has many similarities to A Clockwork Orange. A wounded man takes a strange looking child across town. But when the police get involved, things rapidly degenerate. This doesn't sit well with the strange child, who's in fact a telekinetic. Back with the capsules, they continue battling their rivals, the clowns. Tetsuo catches a fallen clown on the highway. But then, and when the other capsules find Tetsuo, another strange child appears. This is Masaru, who has come to collect his friend Takashi. They're both espers, telepathic and telekinetic in equal measure. Remember this detail, because it's the crux of the entire plot. And so Tetsuo is taken to the esper facility. The next morning, the remaining capsules are interrogated by police. Luckily, their feigned idiocy puts them above suspicion, and they're eventually released, along with an attractive young rebel named Kei. Tetsuo undergoes an MRI scan, and the chief scientist discovers something unsettling. Namely, that Tetsuo has the latent powers of an esper within him too. The next morning, the capsules report to their reform school, but Tetsuo's girlfriend Kaori still wonders what happened to him. She doesn't have to wander long, as Tetsuo escapes the facility. The next morning, Tetsuo steals Kaneda's bike, and takes Kaori for a joyride. But oh dear! Ladies and gentlemen, the first but oh dear of the season. Luckily, Kaneda and the capsules ride to the rescue. Tetsuo, however, is less than grateful. His new powers are starting to manifest, resulting in terrible hallucinations. Which we're skipping because gore. Very gore. But the military scientists were never far away, and they retrieved Tetsuo. Come the night, the city's locked down, and the capsules are out of action. But when a bomb goes off in the subway, Kaneda notices Kei in the panicked throng. Ryu, her counterpart, sends her head, but she's cornered by police. Luckily, Kaneda springs to her rescue. Tetsuo awakes from a nightmare to find himself back in the facility. Where Kyoko, third of the Esper children, has a terrible premonition. A large shadow will loom over Neo Tokyo, and many will die. And Tetsuo's at the centre of it all. 
Kaneda is quizzed by the Resistance after absconding with Kay. Back at the facility, Tetsuo is haunted by nightmares again. And then he's attacked by the other subjects. Yes, milk. Another parallel with a clockwork orange. Luckily for Tetsuo, they're mightily squeamish about blood. Beneath the facility, the Resistance attempt to infiltrate as cable repairmen. <sighs> the old cable repairmen bit. Classic ploy, that. Many's the time I've infiltrated a Chaosite stronghold with it. Predictably, they meet resistance. Kaneda steps up and procures a transport. The radio speaks of Tetsuo's rebellion. But security are powerless to stop him. Tetsuo matches wills with the children and uncovers the truth about Akira. Akira, fourth and by far the strongest of the Esper children, whose power engulfed old Tokyo in 1987. In the wake of this disaster, he was dissected, and his remains kept in cryonic storage. Then Kaneda turns up to the party. <laughs> Slick entrance, kiddo. But now, it's all about Tetsuo Shima. Kaneda and Kei are locked up together, and Kei explains what Akira truly is. In short, the power of Akira is to a man as a man is to an amoeba. <laughs> and that just blows my mind. Actually, there's a little more to it than that, but it's essentially poetic waffle about where ESP actually comes from and the nature of ancient memories, etc, etc, etc. Not really worth diving into. But when the doors are unlocked, they make their escape. Back in the city, Tetsuo takes a cape and makes his way on foot towards Olympic Stadium. But all he finds are a bunch of specimen jars. And then, Kaneda joins the fray. Tetsuo loses an arm to a satellite laser, which Tetsuo promptly destroys. All of which we're skipping to keep the gore to a minimum. This is still a family show after all. Come the night, Tetsuo holds court at the Olympic Stadium, but he can't control his powers and his flesh betrays him. There's only one way to save him. Akira. A resurrected Akira unites with his friends and whisks Tetsuo off from the mortal plane to... somewhere else. Kaneda is accidentally pulled in, and in our world, Neo-Tokyo suffers great damage. The four espers aren't strong enough to return to our world just yet, but they can send back Kaneda, so that's what they do. And so our movie ends with Kaneda, Kai and Kei riding back into the city to face a new world. So then, that was the legendary Akira. And I feel like I really shouldn't put this into the House of Love. But I'm gonna. This isn't a straightforward narrative. Quite apart from the fact that it's been adapted from a 2000 page manga, the story's been stripped, squeezed and whittled down to the barest elements. And for the longest time, I never understood a second of it. Even now, I recognise the narrative leaps, whiplash-inducing scene changes, and entirely underexplained premise. So why then would a movie as stuffed with gore, swearing, and even a flash of incidental boobage as this find a place in the House of Love? Because it's visually stunning. The bike battle, the visceral scenes of Tetsuo's own body betraying him, the spectacle of a ruined dystopia in outright revolt. Even as I watched my VHS subbed copy, taped from a late night screening on BBC Two, I knew this was something. And all of this before we even mention the 2001 anime's dub, which actually manages to make this movie somewhat penetrable. So yes, it's sweary, gory, violent and confusing, but dynamic. Akira is... Akira. The mind-blowing, magnificent spectacle that birthed the anime industry in the Western world. And that's enough for me. So thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. So long, folks! <laughs>